Uh, so my name is Ian Butterworth. I'm a research engineer underneath Martha Gray and Luca Daniel in the research lab of electronics. And I want to talk to you about dehydration. So <clears throat> we all experience dehydration throughout, day, throughout the day. It's something that we have to keep tabs on. Just the prospect of mentioning dehydration a second ago probably prompted you to have a drink. Dehydration is different for the elderly. So the problem is that as we, um, as we are able to maintain our hydration, um, typically keeping it in a hydrated state, oscillating on a daily basis, plus or minus a few percent in total body water, the elderly can't do this. And the problem is that you lose the sense of thirst with age, um, you lose your ability to fend for yourself, um, and a number of other factors. And as a result, the elderly experience this slow creep of dehydration. It happens in small percentages on a daily basis. And what happens is accidents and infections that cause hospitalizations and become the trigger for uh, reduction in health. Now, I saw this personally. My grandfather, um, so this is partially why I became an engineer, um, was uh, at home, got dehydrated, fell, broke his hip, ended up in hospital, and ended up in a care facility for not, um, not that much longer, and unfortunately his life wasn't, uh, didn't sustain much uh, beyond that. And the key thing is that even in these professional care settings, where there are seven million times a day that care professionals try to figure out the hydration state of uh, of residents, they don't have the tools, and it means that you can't get a good idea of how someone's hydration is, is changing. Symptomatic observation presents too late. Tracking fluids in is difficult to do to the required precision, and tracking fluid out, fluids out um, is incredibly hard and often and basically not done. So we went out, we came from this as a technology agnostic project. So we came in and said, here's the problem. We want to work on this. Let's try and find a technology. And the first thing that we did was went out and talked to people on the ground. And it's a, a compelling message. There is no way to sense dehydration, to monitor dehydration in the elderly. And we went out and looked at the emerging technologies. So. Um, there is a technology called bioimpe uh, electrical bioimpedance, uh, which uses uh, conductivity measurements in the body over long distances to measure changes in, um, changes in conductivity. Some people are trying to minimize this into a clinical, into a non-clinical wearable format. But the problem is that while this is a logical, defendable technology, the real world practicalities of making this, uh, the reducing the error and making this work for tracking these small changes is too difficult to overcome because you need uh, c tight control of posture, electrode position, and skin condition. Sweat electrochemistry, as some companies are starting to bring out, um, will not work um, in, uh, without the presence of sweat. Um, and in the sedentary population that we're focusing on, that won't work. Infrared spectroscopy is a technology that a, com a number of companies are looking at. And um, while it, it, it has a, a, good, a good basis for being sensitive to water content, it's sensitive to skin pigmentation. So if you have variations in skin pigmentation, freckles, for instance, change the position of your measurement, and it will change, uh, change the, the reading that you get just based on pigmentation. And um, uh, some companies and, and research groups are working on nuclear magnetic resonance. Um, so a, a device, you put your finger in, it has a, uh, a strong in magnetic field, measures the water content in the, in the finger. The problem is that that's restricted to uh, certain embodiments because of the need for a strong um, magnetic field. So we kind of came to conclude that there was no measure, no uh, technique that's a sensitive and reliable indicator of at least mild dehydration that's also practical for everyday use. So we're currently working through the IP in our sensor. I can't go into too, I can't go into a lot of detail, but what I, wanted, what I do want to tell you is we have a sensor that is the active surface is about the, end, the size of the end of a pencil. It's very sensitive to water through using 
uh, gigahertz range radio frequency um, field detection. We have shown that it's very linear with tissue water, so we've provided a very, very sensitive, very linear measure of the water content in tissue. It's very local, and, that we, and we've shown that it trends with controlled dehydration and rehydration events. So in this case, the first four days were typical behavior, and on the fifth day, uh, the person was uh, nil by mouth. And this resulted in a dehydration of event only equatable to one or two percent body weight change, which is very mild. So what we have, and what we've been focusing on thanks to our um, Dishbande funding, is a sense of proof of concept. We've shown um, the various factors that we need to prove that our sensor is capable. And the next step that we want to do is to focus on figuring out the exact embodiment. Because our sensor is small enough to be incorporated into a variety of different embodiments. It's based on chipsets um, that have been uh, made very cost effective and power effect, uh, efficient um, through communications. Um, and we want to make sure that we make the right device to meet the, meet the need and make sure that we have good compliance. Um, so we're a motivated team. We have a lot of personal connection to the, this kind of issue through seeing our friends and family. Um, suffer, um, and I want to, you know, offer you to come and join me for a drink by the poster. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much.